Well, hello and welcome to this edition of the EV Revolution Show. My name is Kenneth Bocor, your host for this special car review edition where I've got my hands on a 2021 Ford Mustang Mach-E. I want to thank the owner and you'll, you'll uh, listen to him a little bit near the end of the show, get his impressions, but he's a brand new owner of this vehicle, only about three weeks now that he's had it and he's let me come down and do some filming and driving around of it. So I want to thank him very much and thank you for tuning in. So I've got a lot of details to cover on today's show. Let me get right into it. Now this is Ford's first true all-electric entry into the EV market space uh, on the, the, the bounds that this is a vehicle that was built ground up as an all-electric vehicle. And you know, for them to go out on a limb and name it after the Mustang marquee brand that that is, is a big step for Ford. But what it shows me, and I hope it shows you, is that they're serious about electrification because they're going to take one of their pride and joy brands that they've had since the 60s and put that out there as an all-electric model. And I'm quite impressed with that. As you can see, the design of the, the vehicle is very, very nice. It's got nice lines. Uh, it's got all LED stuff running on it. I love the sculptured look at it. At it. And, you know, it is kind of between a, a small SUV and a CUV type vehicle. And they seem to be all the rage, as you folks know, CUVs, where they, they, they have the utility of both uh, you know, a station wagon almost as having to hatch with some, some storage uh, capacity, which you'll see later in the video, and being able to sit a little higher and have a really nice driving characteristic, again, with the batteries on the floor. Now, you'll see in this vehicle that the past and the future collide on this vehicle with the Ford Mustang Mach-E. It's really inspired by their unmistakable pony car and powered, again, exclusively by electricity. It's got the tri rear tail lights. It's got the pony on it. One thing you won't find though on this vehicle, and it was pointed out to me by the owner, is there's no Ford logos. You'll see lots of Mustang logos, but nothing that says Ford on it. And that's again, a statement of the OEM of, of Ford for them and their steps towards electrification. Of course, it shares the name and familiar styling cues with the original Mustang and with the current Mustangs. What you will get for power is anything from 266 horsepower up to 480 horsepower for the top of the line GT, being a dual motor all wheel drive vehicle. All that power translates into 317 foot pounds uh, standard uh, for, the low, for the select range up to 634 pound feet or foot pounds of torque, whichever way you look at it to really launch this vehicle into the zero to 60 time slot in about the four to five second range. Now Ford has put uh, two battery pack options into these vehicles. One that's a 68 kilowatt hour option. The other one being an 88 uh, kilowatt hour. So their standard range and their extended range models. And again, the trims come with different size batteries. But what that gives you uh, is a range anywhere from 370 kilometers. But if you really want to eke out the maximum distance and the package you want to get is most likely the premium edition, uh, even the California Route 1, because they're going to push 483 kilometers, 490 kilometers and 300 miles and change. And additionally, depending on the trim, you can get this in single motor, real wheel drive or dual motor, all wheel drive options. Now, one cool feature that we actually don't really notice too much in most EVs, but here you can kind of see it. See this black trim at the bottom, all this black trim, that's the battery pack. So you can actually get a little bit of a visual to really see the flat floor in these vehicles and that skateboard design. Now, one cool technology feature that uh, Ford has in the Mustang Mach-E is the doors. A lot of people talk about how the heck they open the doors. Now, you thought Tesla was different with the J handles on the Model 3. Well, check this out. When you have the key fob and you're close enough to the vehicle, anywhere within 10, 10 meters or less cut type of thing, there's a button here on the side. And you just push that button, it actually pops out the door and it has a handle that you can grab to pull it. And then you just close it when you're inside. Also has Ford's... Um, numbering system for locking. You can put a code in and unlock and unlock the doors. They've had this for quite some time, so they've incorporated that into the Ford Mustang Mach-E as well. And the rear, it's, it's a little bit very similar as well. You walk up, there's a rear passenger, you push the button, and a little motor pops the door out, and then you just pull it out, and off you go. So nice and easy for Ford to do, and uh, it's pretty cool. I like it. The interior of the Mustang Mach-E is very nice. There's ample space for passengers, more than six feet tall to fit both in the front and back. It's nicely pointed with the leatherette in this case for the cabin. The infotainment system is part of Ford's latest SYNC 4 system, has a 15.5 inch central touchscreen and a 10.2 digital drive cluster that has all kinds of functionality. 
The large panoramic roof really is nice. It lets a lot of light in. And as you can see, getting in and out of the rear seat of the Mach-E is not that challenging, even for a big guy like me. Now, one cool little feature that the owner pointed out is that this front camera, which is great for parking, and you can actually activate it while you're driving, I understand. But a cool thing that Ford saw, obviously, put a little uh, washer nozzle outlet here. So that as you're driving, when you run your, um, cleaning your front windows with your washer fluid, it'll actually spray the camera as well and keep it clean. Good feature, I like that. Now, as I mentioned, some of the specs on the front size, and again, what I mentioned is it does come with this compartment type of mechanism, this plastic that you can put in and take out if you wanted to. It's secured by clips, but it's nice. It lets you be able to compartmentalize this. You can put different things, and of course, it does let you drain, and if you want to take everything out and make it as a big tub of ice, you can do that. Car area behind this, the rear seats is 30 cubic feet or 840 liters, but when you put those rear seats down, you get you double it to 60 cubic feet or uh, 16, almost 1700 liters of storage space. Now Ford knows that people want to drive Mustangs and they want to go on trips. So what they've done is implement fast charging as a standard feature here in the charging port. And it does support up to 150 kilowatts of DC fast charging. And on level one, level two, or level two, it will support up to 10.5 kilowatts, which is nice, which means you should be able to charge this overnight on a level two charger at home. Now for safety, Ford combines this vehicle with their Copilot 360 2.0 system, which includes all, pretty well all the standard safety features we've come to know and love, including auto high beams, blind spot monitoring, cross-traffic alerts, lane keeping, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, um, automatic emergency braking, pre-collision assist, um, post-collision braking as well, rear view cameras, uh, it's got a reversing brake assist and a reverse sensing system for height and for so you don't bump into curves. Also has 360 degree camera views, which I'll show you as well. And th those views are becoming more popular. You know, I first discovered it on my Nissan Leaf and I thought it was great to have that view. And I'm glad to see Ford put those in their vehicles as well. One of the things you'll, you'll uh, I've got a little video coming up about the lane keeping and the intelligent cruise control or adaptive cruise control, however you want to say it. It does support stop and go lane key, stop and go driving as well. So it will bring itself to a complete stop and it will go like Tesla's and some of the other vehicles out there when you're following traffic in that mode. All right, now that you've seen and all the features of the car, at least from the outside and some of the interior, let's take it for a drive. All right, so some driving impressions of the Ford Mustang Mach-E. And got to wear a full mask because uh, the owner is in the car with me. So I want to take all the safe protocols and wear my gloves and I will wipe everything down when we're done. So first impressions, it's got great get up and go. We tried a quick unbridled mode just to see how the acceleration was. It's nice and quick. Um, again, all battery electric vehicles have really good acceleration. Um, that's just a feature of battery electric vehicles, right? That instant torque. I love the seating position in the, in the Mustang Mach-E here. Uh, sit nice and high. Again, that SUV-ish type of feel, but not being too high. Uh, steering is really, really nice and responsive. It's a little soft, but uh, it's nice. The suspension handles the bumps very well. I purposely went down these kind of second tier roads here just to get a, an idea of the suspension and the feel. It's very nice. Actually, much smoother than the Model 3, I'll tell you that. Uh, and that's very nice. We've got it set for one pedal driving. So it's a, it's a single mode type of regen when you're in one pedal. When you turn it off, you get basically coast mode. There's very, very little regen to none. But in uh, one pedal, you can feather the, the accelerator, of course, to get different feels for the deceleration. And uh, it will bring you to a full stop. It will hold you. It'll activate the, the brake lights as well and all that good safety stuff that it does. It's a nice quiet cabin, even with all the glass. That's always a fear for some people when you have so much glass. But this is a very nice quiet cabin. Uh, quieter than my Model 3, I'll have to admit. And, you know, almost as, if not as quiet as my Leaf, because uh, that's one thing you guys have heard me say, is that that Leaf was really quiet. It was, uh, it was something to drive, especially on the highway. Uh, but this is nice and smooth. Now, again, the tires aren't super fat. They're, I, I think, a moderate size tires on these ones being 225s for the width. Uh, I don't think you need to go super fat. I think these are these hold the road quite well. And they uh, are, of course, efficient tires. And they will cut the noise down as well as add to your efficiency. 
Now, speaking on that quietness, the even the motor whine is very small on this. It's not as pronounceable as I, I, I can hear on, on Model 3 or even some other all electric. So Ford's done a really good job at soundproofing the cabin and really trying to toning down that EV motor whine that you hear. Um, you know, this is an all wheel drive dual motor uh, first edition that uh, Dave has here and it's exceptionally quiet. I'm, I'm very, very impressed with that. From the dash layout, everything is very convenient to reach all the controls. I, I like having actually the, the center uh, binnacle that uh, we don't have in the Model 3 in the Tesla products, at least the Model 3. What we do have here gives you all the, the quick information at a glance. Now, like anything, I'm used to my Model 3, so I'm used to looking over there and getting all the information. It doesn't really take long, but there is something to say to still have that binnacle here. Just makes life a little easier. The seats are very comfortable, very supportive. It, uh, they're all power seats here up front and uh, many uh, types of adjustability, so I've been able to find a nice, comfortable position. So I've activated the lane keeping now and the, the basically the autopilot, Ford's autopilot version of Tesla's product. And it actually works really well. It's got your bonging that you just heard, which meant that I have to put my hands on the wheel every, oh, 15 or 20 seconds or so. But as you can see, um, you know, it's keeping uh, very nicely within the lane. Uh, sometimes a little bit of drifting here and there, but all in all, not bad. Yeah, sometimes it does follow the slope of the road a little bit, but all in all, it's keeping it in the middle. It's got this nice, like, force field type kind of approach here, or display uh, on the binnacle. It shows you this bubble when you've activated the full self-driving here, and uh, it does a pretty good job. The It did slow down for a car that slowed down in front of us, and uh, waited till that got out of the lane before it started accelerating again, so it does have very good adaptive uh, cruise control. And uh, again, the lane keeping is, is really good. Hands um, off. Yeah, hands off, yes. So it's a good system. I would say it's very comparable to Tesla's uh, system. Um, not a lot of ping-ponging that I'm seeing here. It does follow corners as well. So good job, Ford, for your uh, 2.0 system. I think you've done a great job. So my overall driving impressions of this is it's a really nice vehicle to drive. It's very easy. Um, you know, you may see some flickering on the center here uh, behind the steering wheel because that's the um, the uh, cameras that look at the human face and look, make sure that when you have the self-driving activated that you're actually paying attention to the road so that you can take over because it will, will beep at you and get angry if you're, you know, on your phone or doing something else, not really looking at the front where you're driving and it will... Uh, it will recognize that fact and that's that's becoming standard on a lot of the Lincoln products as well as uh, more Ford products. So it's a really nice feature and I'm glad that Ford's done that. You know, uh, th this Lance, this um, portrait approach to the screen is, is great. It's a nice big screen, easy to find menus. I still like having a physical knob. I know some people don't like it. I don't mind it. It just makes, uh, you know, I know you can control stuff on the steering wheel, but it does make finding things really, really nice. It's got great menu systems for uh, all the things that you need to look at from an EV perspective to see your charging. It's got a really nice nav system. So Ford's done a really good job. Now the Mustang Mach-E does come in several types of trims. It starts with a base select model and goes all the way up to the GT Performance Edition. And Canadian prices range from uh, just over 50,000 to just over 80, almost 83,000 Canadian for the top of the line with various specs that go along with that. All right, so really to close on this vehicle, uh, you know, I think it's a great vehicle. You know, I love anything all electric, as you guys know. I think Ford has built a really good quality product here. Again, taking their marquee brand and putting it out there as an all electric, you know, it takes a lot of uh, confidence, I guess, in your marketing strategy and where you want to go with your platforms to be able to do that. So again, my hat's off to Ford for doing that. This is a very nice, comfortable vehicle. The appointments are very nice. Uh, you know, the touchscreen, everything has all the things that you will need to get you on your trips. There's lots of range, good support for fast charging. There's no reason why this would not be a great pick for any person looking for a good all around, all electric vehicle that's got some carrying capacity that you can do some things with and go for some nice drives. So big thumbs up for Ford uh, and the Mustang Mach-E. This is a great vehicle and I look forward to seeing more of these out on the road. And I want to thank Dave, the owner of this vehicle, who lives in the beautiful city of Coburg. If you haven't been here in Ontario, check it out. It's a beautiful area along Lake Ontario. I want to thank him for letting me use this. In fact, I'm going to bring him on camera for a second, just get his couple minutes of his opinions. So this is David, the owner of this beautiful Ford Mustang Mach-E. And David, again, thank you for letting me use it. I appreciate no it a lot. 
just give a couple of minutes of really your initial thoughts. You've had this for almost a month. What do you, and this is your first all electric, so what do you Absolutely. think? Absolutely. Yes, well, I am enjoying the, the quietness, performance, the pickup, the acceleration is great. The uh, going around the corners is very smooth. The um, interior is very nicely um, finished. And your overall, because you know, this is your first EV, so you, were you concerned that you had to change your habits and now you're finding you really don't? What's your, what's your take on that? Well, the, not my habits. It uh -huh. takes a bit of getting used to. And this is with the, with the one pedal driving. When I lift off the accelerator, and I'm trying to train myself not to say gas pedal, yep. the, um, the deceleration is more, is more aggressive. Yes. But what it does is it recharges the battery in slowing down. Listen, I'm really glad that you love the vehicle and that you've adapted to an all-electric lifestyle and are enjoying it. So thank you for letting me You're use welcome. it. You're welcome. All right, so thanks again for watching, for tuning into this edition of the EV Revolution Show. I'm always grateful for everybody on YouTube that watches me. Thank you very much. Please tell me your comments. If you have one of these, I'd love to hear from you. Like, subscribe, all that stuff if you haven't. Would appreciate if you do. Always a humble thanks to my Patreon supporters. You know who you are. The names always go up on, on each and every show that I do, folks, so I never forget you guys. Thank you very much. If you're interested in learning more, check out the links below, and you can uh, see what that's all about. Uh, again, everybody, please stay safe. You know, we're using masks here. We're trying to, we're taking the precautions needed. So everybody, continue to follow public health guidelines and do what you need to do so we can get through this pandemic safely. And keep watching more OEMs as more vehicles are gonna be released this year. There's a whole slew coming. And I hope to get a few more reviews in, of course, for this calendar year. And keep your eyes on the marketplace because it's hot, hot, hot. So until the next show, thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you when I see you. Take care and bye-bye.